Good morning, good afternoon, whatever time of day it is. I hope that you are having a terrific Thursday. This is Mrs. Patterson and Mrs. Felix coming at you from our virtual teleschool. Today is week three, day four. It is Thursday, April 2nd, if we are on track. And we are talking about determining the theme of a story. So for the past couple of days, we've been working through our iReady packet by utilizing Nearpod, or some of you might actually have a printed out version for yourself. But either way it goes, we are now on Thursday and we are switching it up a little bit by going to a article, well, two articles from ReadWorks. So ReadWorks is a website um, that a lot of you in Ms. Felix class have probably utilized this a few times. But ReadWorks is a great website where you can find a lot of articles. So there are passages and there, are, and there are question sets that come with it as well. I've already downloaded it, so I'm going to read through it with the articles directly printed out. But it, this is also in your Nearpod. So you'll see the articles in your Nearpod. So this way, parents, we are decreasing the amount of printing that you have to do. You no longer have to go pick up the packets because everything we need you all to do is going to be right here in our Nearpod. So these pages that are also on ReadWorks are also here in our Nearpod for the kids to read along. So if you all just follow along with me, we are gonna get started reading these articles. The first one we are reading is called Confessions of a New Girl, and this is from ReadWorks. On the third Tuesday in March, Addie watched her sister transform from a little girl into a spider. This was not, Addie told me, a lie or an exaggeration. This was the absolute, cross her fingers, honest to goodness truth. I was sitting at breakfast, Addie began, and in comes the report card queen, wearing my pink sweater. I was so mad. I was just furious. And I glared at her. And I said, take that off right now, you little bug. And poof, she became a spider. Well, where is she now? I asked, because I've seen many things before. But I've never seen anyone turn into a spider. Well, she's human again, silly, Addie said, laughing. She looped her arm through mine, and we skipped down the sidewalk. I happen to be one of the best skippers in the whole USA, so that's the only way I travel. Now, I'm new in town, so I'm, I'm in no position to turn down friends, but Addie M. Walker? would not be my first choice. She's nice, don't get me wrong. But I think she might not always tell the truth. Take this story she told me not five minutes after I met her. I'm part fairy, she said. Only fairies can wiggle their ears. And she pulled back her hair to show me. I tried to wiggle mine, but I only ended up hurting my jaw. As my father would say though, Beggars can't be choosers. And none of the other kids in this town is standing in line to be my friend. Today we're going to the zoo. Our teacher, Mr. Larby, he's is very excited. Too excited, it seems to me. Because when he said the word ostrich, he spilled his entire cup of coffee down his shirt from giggling. Like a child who had just who had his first taste of ice cream. Addie chose me for her partner. Or rather, no one else chose me as a partner and <laughs> it was only the two of us left. When we got to the zoo, Addie walked right over to the elephants and said, I had a pet elephant when I was little. We called him Barb. Well, that was just too much for me. I had had enough. Addie and Walker, I shouted, I'm sick of your lies. Find a new partner. And I left skipping, of course, to see the giraffes. Just a few minutes later, I began to feel bad. I can be very sensitive, you see. 
It wasn't Addie's fault that no one had taught her to tell the truth. And she did seem to like me. In fact, she really was the only kid in my entire third grade class who was nice to me. I looked around. I was all alone in this part of the zoo. Mr. Larrabee was probably near the ostriches, but I had no idea how to find them. I regretted saying anything to Addie. We could be skipping next to rhinos right now if I had just kept my mouth shut. And then I saw her. And I swear this is the absolute cross my fingers, honest to goodness truth. Addie was dancing ballet on top of a giraffe's back. I rubbed my eyes. Maybe, maybe the heat had gotten to me. But no, there she was, performing pirouettes on top of the tallest giraffe. She giggled and waved. I told you I was a fairy, she yelled. I smiled. I was beginning to think life in this town wouldn't be so bad after all. So that is our first story, but we have two articles that we're going to work with. So this next one, if you are continuing along in the Nearpod, it is called A Sudden Slice of Summer, also by Reed Works. The snow began to fall early this year, in November, before Susanna even had a chance to bring her puffed up purple winter coat out of the closet. It did not stop. Cold white confetti came down on the city of Montreal morning, noon, and night, and already Susanna was wondering when the party would end. The other kids in her class loved the snow. They loved that sometimes, when the winds picked up and the roads turned icy, school was canceled. They liked to build towering forts and snowmen, whose noses were the carrot sticks they found packed in their lunch boxes. Susanna despised the snow. More than that, she hated everything about wintertime. Her family had taken a trip to Florida two winters ago, and she wished that they could live there all year round. She had bobbed up and down in the ocean waves, sometimes floating on her back, and other times with goggles on, searching for colored fish in the water. In the mornings, her, ma her mother had squeezed fresh juice from the Florida-grown oranges that the hotel left in a basket at the front desk. With her brother and sister, Susanna had constructed a magnificent castle on the beach with a moat and a long, looping flight of stairs. She liked feeling the sand between her fingers. It stuck together every bit as well as snow did, and it didn't make your teeth chatter. At the end of this week, Susanna's family was going to drive an hour north to the ski hill. They would spend Saturday there, riding chairlifts to the top of a frosted mountain and following the slopes back down. Susanna refused to go with them. She wanted nothing to do with that thick white powdery stuff. It was bad enough that she had to trudge through it every day on her way to Sunnydale Elementary. Arrangements had been made. Grandma was coming to the house to look after her. She was determined to stay warm and dry. There were packets of hot cocoa in the pantry. Susanna's parents finished packing up the car. Her siblings, who had been throwing snowballs into the air at each other, piled into the back seat. Soon the station wagon disappeared from view, and Grandma settled into an armchair in front of the television. In a few quick minutes, she was asleep. Susanna glanced outside and gave a sigh. <sighs> Her hot chocolate was just about gone. She was about to turn towards the sink to rinse her mug when out of the corner of her eye she caught something green. Something green. In her blank white backyard, she pressed her face up against the kitchen window. There in the corner of the yard closest to the sliding back door, the snow had melted away. In its place, a small tree with low-hanging fruit was growing. Susanna immediately ran out to it. Elsewhere, the snowy flakes continued to swirl, but not a single one landed on this bright patch of ground, which was covered in sand. 
the sun beamed down on Susanna, so hard, in fact, that she was hot. Sweating hot. Half buried by her feet were a plastic shovel and pail. She couldn't believe it. A small slice of the tropical holiday she had been missing had landed right behind her house. She ran inside for her bathing suit. For the next few hours, while Grandma lay dozing, Susanna sprawled out on her own little beach. At first, she could not stop smiling. She giddily stretched out her limbs and moved them back and forth, making a snow angel. No, a sand angel. She read a bit of a book. She picked a few oranges and unpeeled them one by one. She dug holes and then filled them in again. After that, she didn't quite know what to do. Apparently, the pleasures of the warm sand beach were a lot less fun when there was no one around to share them with. Susanna would have woken her grandmother, but she remembered that grandma didn't much care for the sun. She had spent the family's entire Florida vacation under both an umbrella and a huge brim hat. Besides, the sunny space wasn't big enough for two. By late afternoon, Susanna wasn't feeling very well. Her mother hadn't been around to lather her in suntan lotion, and her skin had turned a very dark shade of pink. She had eaten so many sickly sweet oranges that she now had a stomach ache. She had gotten some sand in her eye and had to blink furiously to get it out. The sun was strong and unrelenting. She glanced over to the other side of the yard. She was reluctant to admit it, even to herself. But the snow looked sort of refreshing. She imagined racing her siblings to the bottom of that frosted mountain. Perhaps skiing with her family wouldn't have been so terrible. She was flushed and bored, but most of all, she missed them. She trudged, in, sh trudged inside, showered the sweat and the sand off of her body, and then joined her grandma, who had finally awoken at the table. My dear, however did you manage to get that awful sunburn? Her grandmother wailed. Susanna just shrugged. She wasn't very hungry, but she managed to pack in some forkfuls of spaghetti and three meatballs. Before bed, she crept over to the back door and peered out. The sand, the tree, the bucket, all were gone. Susanna began to think that she had imagined it. She wasn't that disappointed. Her brother and sister would be back in the morning, and she badly wanted to play with them, even if it meant being chilly. The car pulled into the driveway. Susanna was up with the start, and she charged downstairs. She welcomed both of her parents home with hugs and gave one to her grandmother, too, who was preparing to leave. Then as her mother began to ready breakfast, she pulled on her snowsuit and joined her siblings in the back. They were sculpting animals, a caterpillar with the snowy lumps for a body, a fish with a three-dimensional fin, and they were surprised to see her there. She dropped to her knees without explanation, and began to work. Her hat was pulled low over her ears, her mittens were lined with wool, and suddenly her sister's hand was over hers. Helping to smooth out the fish's curved tail, she could wait for summer. She was warming up. All right, you guys, so I just read through our two stories that are gonna help us learn the value of others. You have some questions that are also in the Nearpod for you to answer. One of them wants you to use the article all of a sudden of summer, or sorry, a sudden slice of summer to answer questions one through three. So please follow through, make sure that you answer all of these. As I said, they are included in your Nearpod. So if you continue through the Nearpod after we just read the story, you will see that the next pages if you click on this text feature, you are able to put a text box where you need it to so that you can type your answers and submit. So that's how you use it. I will see you tomorrow. Tomorrow's Friday, y'all. It's the end of the week and the last day. So make sure you guys finish up all of the different parts here in the Nearpod. Finish up these questions and make sure you do your one eye ready lesson for the day. See you soon.